Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumit Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today I want to speak about the three stages of the flow awakened lover. And by lover, I mean sex, all right? However, this can be any kind of lover, right? So a lover of your art form, right? A lover of life. We've got to live our lives as if we are making love to it. Right? We sometimes have to go slow and sometimes we have to go fast. Sometimes we have to be spontaneous. Sometimes we have to be very disciplined. All right? Sometimes we have to surrender to the moment and sometimes we have to set up a few boundaries and rules and safe words. That is the overarching principle. I want you to think of these three stages. These three stages are from David Data from the book Enlightened Sex and I've sort of modified it to incorporate it into a flow state model. So this is kind of my own interpretation of his work. Of course, this has nothing to do with gender norms, but I'm just using that as a way to describe it very linearly and very pragmatically. However, this thing goes a lot deeper than how I'm explaining it, all right? So the first stage, if you want to think about the first stage, is a space of needing. It's about me. It's about me, 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 and what I want in love. What do I want in love? I want my partner to look at me. All right? I want my partner to kiss me. I want my partner to do this. I want my partner to do that, okay? That's the first stage of a need, and it's a me, right? It's a very self-serving, and a lot of times people have a tough time knowing what they want and what they need. So this is the first initial stage, so it's very important stage, right? It's the first initial stage, so it's a very important stage. It's getting to know what we truly want. And if you want to see this stage, you can kind of look at it as the stereotypical model of the macho man going out into the world and the submissive housewife, right? Kind of what we believed in the 1950s and, you know, before that, where before the whole feminist movement and all this kind of stuff started, right? You can kind of look back at that time and see this kind of understanding of this is what I want and it's about me and understanding that. So that's the first stage, but then there's an evolution happening and the next stage is how men are becoming a lot more feminine feminized in a way so you notice them being like the new age spiritual guy or a lot more sensitive you could kind of see this next stage is women being ball busters and very masculine and guys being kind of hippie wimpy guys right so that's the second stage now the second stage is a lot more about what do we want right so men are saying okay equality right it's like I'm okay let me ask the woman what she wants actually and let me actually compromise and be able to speak and get into conversation right that's the next stage and women are a lot more professional here they're very directed right they're going out into the world they're like i don't i don't need no man right i'm an independent woman right i don't need no man to get me <laughs> my money right i can make my own money for myself and i can provide for myself and then you know so that that's the second dynamic the second stage is kind of this this breaking down of these kind of polarities or these boundaries right but the second one is kind of like this understanding of yeah we've got to build boundaries in a sense so it goes from me to we right me to we and then it goes into the third stage which is about infinity now how do I explain this it's no more about man woman good bad this that it's not duality right the third stage of the flow awakened lover is the fact that yes I can transform myself, I can shapeshift myself into how I want it. So in one moment I can be a lot more yielding and feminine, and in another moment I can actually be a lot more masculine and tactful and directed in my approach. So it changes with the moment, and you've got to understand these are also moments, right? So a person can get very hurt and then step back into the first stage as well, right? So the thing is like, you know, you want to think of like a, the tyrant for the man. It's like the tyrant, the hippie, and then the saint. All right. It's so the awakened one. Understand that you can be a saint at times, but then a moment will trigger you. You'll go back to being the tyrant, the macho guy again and try to, you know, put up a wall. Try to be like, hey, what the hell's going on? Right. That boom, that initial feeling of your boundary has been crossed or whatever. And you go back. So... You know, when we're making love, we need passion. And we can't be two friends just rubbing genitals together. It just doesn't work in that dynamic. 
right? And so there, there's got to be a masculine and a feminine. There's got to be a ravisher and a ravishi, right? This moment of like this dance of yin and yang. However, that dance, you know, in the third stage is like this infinity, meaning that you are everything. You are becoming love. So you're saying to yourself, how can I be love much more deeply? And how can I melt into love? How can I surrender into this higher, greater good in this moment? What is the deepest love living through you? In the third stage, it can be that the deepest love living through you is actually you being a millionaire. Or the deepest love living through you is you having a lot of children. Or the deepest love living through you is you being a monk and very disciplined and celibate. The deepest love moving through you could be you having a lot of friends in a really great social circle. So you have to ask yourself, you have to do the internal work and go into yourself and be like, what is the deepest love living through me? And actually acting on that and maintaining that and understanding that these moments, these lived moments of sainthood or awakening or enlightening, right? Enlighten, meaning you're self-lit, right? Enlightened sex or flow-awakened sex feels much more like a dream and a dream is self-lit you see what i'm saying it does not feel real it feels so real what you're doing is you're getting rid of the boundaries from me to we to people to infinity from me to we to infinity the infinity is like yo god is living through you right now when you when you say you are a sex god or a sex goddess this is what this means it means that the universe is making love through you You've given up all sense of control. Like, oh, I have to have it this way and this very bit. Okay, of course, right? You've got to still have consent and all these different things, right? But once you're in that moment, it's a feeling of being in that flow, being in that pocket, right? Being in that surrender, that releasing and allowing yourself to be fully free and trusting of the other person. You want to trust that other person that you're with more than you trust yourself at a certain point. But that does not mean that you, that you are both conduits of this universal consciousness, obviously, right? So what you're doing, man, this music is perfect for this topic, huh, in the background. <laughs> it's like a tantric, like, you know, like. So you're rising inclusive of everything else. And you're living as if you are everything. You are more offering of the gift that you were born into this world with more than ever. So guess what? If you are a painter, you are bringing that delicate brush stroke into your lovemaking. If you are a guitarist, you're bringing that crescendo moment of you playing a guitar, that crescendo moment into the orgasm of how you're experiencing that with a partner. You see what I'm saying? So you're using your skill set, you're using your strength, and you're bringing it through from the infinity and being able to get into a flow state during that. Right? You're using your skills, you're using your talents, you're using your craft, to be able to strengthen you in your lovemaking. And you're being hyper-present with the other person as well. Basically what you're doing is you're recognizing everything rising as light together. In a lot of movies you watch these kind of sex scenes, right? And you see like fireworks, or you see kind of a cutting to one scene where they're just going in. But it's this state of ecstasy. I mean, that is the kind of moments. Ecstasis means going beyond the self. So when you're thinking, oh, like, what do I do right now? You're still in first stage, my friend. If you're still thinking, man, I want her to touch my neck in this way. I want her to kiss this part of my body. You're still in first stage, my friend. Okay? Then stage two would be thinking about her, right? So you're making love to her, and you're like, what, how, what can I do to please her? And the third stage is not even thinking about me or her. It's thinking about both of you. But it's also this surrendering to the love that is deeply there, connecting both of you, connecting your city, connecting your country, connecting this entire world, this cosmic feeling, right? That's third stage, right? Maybe you might have that stage and you might have a crutch of like, okay, I drank one night and maybe I felt that a little bit with a partner once or whatever, but you want to engage with this state much more naturally, right? Because it is that feeling of being present with them it is that finding that connection not that attachment it is that being the infinity and living through infinity you got to know where your heart needs to grow that's why it's so important when you go to from the me stage to the second stage the we stage is that you learn to trust yourself 
And once you learn to trust yourself, you learn to trust others and somebody else. And once you learn to trust the other person, then you can trust in the universe. And once you can trust in the universe, guess what? You reach it. You reach that state where you're not thinking of me. You're not thinking of two duality, but you're thinking of non-duality. You're thinking outside of the form. You're, you're formless now. You're like water. You were in that bedroom and for that moment of time, but you were actually everywhere. You're permeating. A lot of people, when they are having an ecstatic moment like that with another person, they forget that they are even there. Right, so they start moaning really loud, or they they forget they they lose consciousness. Right, they and they get into this peak experience, and that's what I'm talking about right here. If you're talking about the flow state, you're gonna want to get into that peak experience where you let go of these labels. So yeah, okay, let's say you're the macho guy, and then you have the submissive housewife, and it's like okay, you've evolved into the second stage where she's doing some more work, and she's you know she's going into that much more of your masculine nature and you're tapping into your feminine nature and the third stage is like that integration you know what I'm saying where you find your masculine state and your beingness your beingness of deeply being in love with yourself as a man again and you as a woman being deeply in love with yourself as a woman and with your partner right and you and you maintain that polarity that masculine and feminine polarity but it's it's enhancing that it's not just one and one equals two Okay, it's one plus one equals infinity. And that's the difference. Right? That is the difference. If you understand this, your future partners or your current partner probably loves you. And that you you rock their world and you rock their bedroom. And you know that this sexual energy, so this creative energy comes through in your love making as well, right? It's gonna come through in the boardroom and the bedroom and the living room. And the studio art space room and the recording studio and the this and the that and everywhere you go you are deeply in love with the present moment yeah we have moments like let's say I have a moment where I notice my you know sensitive side come out and I feel very much in my feels you could say in my emotions I step into my lower feminine nature and I start complaining Right, my, my own internal dialogue, it steps into stage two. I notice I'm in stage two. Now how can I make this much more about me falling in love deeply with this present moment and radiate? Because then in that stage as a man, you want to radiate. Right? You, you're looking after your, your aesthetics. Maybe you're, you're grooming well. Right? You're, you're looking after yourself. It's good. But you're, maybe you've lost that masculine touch, that edge, the refinement that sharpness in your delivery and that groundedness of you being connected here in the now where you can be a container of space for the woman where she can ravenously explore her wild creative nature and imagination and you are able to hold that space for her and you are the strong oak tree and she is the balloon and you take her balloon string and you tie it on one of your branches and you're just there you're holding it she's She's complaining, she's yelling at you, she's throwing a temper tantrum, and you're just... You know like the sound of THX or Dolby Digital, that sound like... That is you. You are pure awareness, you are pure consciousness, and you're able to hold that energy. You are the cave within which the tsunami happens. So you give her a feeling of safety where she can melt and be much more into her feminine. She feels safe in your presence, and so she, ah, ah, she allows herself to let go. To let go, meaning to release. And you as a man, you take charge in the bedroom. You are there, but at the same time you are understanding, you are surrendering to what is happening. You are not there to control the situation, and this is about me, and I want this done. It's a, it's a play. In this one moment, you're much more yielding and sensitive. In the other moment, you turn her around and you flip her over. And now you are there to be the yang, the divine light, the divine masculine energy permeating your light, the consciousness of all there is into that one moment. Now, a lot of people might see this video. Man, this guy's going wild, man. He's just talking about sex. I don't know what he's talking about right now. Okay, wow, that's wild, man. I don't know. I don't even think about sex like this. I mean, I just want to bust a nut and I don't even know. This is about 
flow awakening. This is not penis and vagina basic sex. This is about life changing cosmic unity transforming both of you and emanating a transcendent experience where you where for a second you don't think about your little daily routines or who left the dishes in the kitchen or this and that and this and that and you are just there purely in a state of oneness where time has stopped for you and nothing else matters and yes, you might be logically doing certain movements and things and like you pinch your nipples and this and that and all that stuff. That is all there. But you're weaving in and out of stage one, stage two. So you might have moments where you're in stage three and you're fully present with that other person. And you're there and you're thrusting away whatever you're doing, right? But then there might be a moment where she says something that might throw you off and you go back into stage one. I want you to catch those moments and reframe them. So let's say she goes... Yeah, you go champ or something and then that triggers a memory in your mind of when you were four years old that your your PE teacher called you champ and it made you feel upset and so it's coming through to this one moment where you're such in a vulnerable state with another person and how could she say this and she, doesn't she know and all this ego comes up and you become the tyrant again and you become a bit more aggressive you start pulling on her hair a little bit and then this is not from a personal experience by the way I'm just speaking in that moment you might come out but it seems forced that's not infinite oneness and energy so what can you do in that moment you slow it down and you say hey she wants me to feel good and so she's saying champ my storyline of what champ means to me is my own storyline all right I gotta let this go and I gotta talk to her after this and we can laugh together about this moment you know when you said champ, I totally, it threw me off a little bit. But guess what? This is what I was thinking and this was the process that I was going through. That deep core honesty and truth, that's going to strengthen whatever you guys have. But if you keep it within you and you hold that back, you're gonna, it's going to start eating at you, man. You know what I mean? This is the video for the true sex gods and sex goddesses. You guys know what I'm talking about. You might have experienced this, you might not have, maybe you're a virgin watching, I don't know. But what I do know is if you keep implementing and noticing these three stages and weaving in and out moment to moment, allowing yourself to go from me to we to oneness and infinite consciousness, you will notice there is a certain power there. And with that power, you can transform yourself and the world. Love and blessings. Have an amazing day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary.